Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you, President Jacim. And thank you very much for, for being here for the very stimulating discussion, inspiring you know, discussion. Um, if we are looking for solutions, I think uh, we, we need to consider the possibility to restore marine ecosystems all over the, the planet. Uh, we, we have been discussing today about the uh, marine habitat decline, and this is quite evident to all of us. It is sufficient to be aged at my age, 50 years, to understand that when we were younger, we could you know, see a different you know, blue planet using a mask and going at sea. And uh, not to talk about the traditions of the old fishermen, the grandfathers that were describing completely different, you know, were big fish there, you know, uh, Rashid. And, and now most of these habitats have been uh, destroyed or just disappeared. And, and not to mention about the bleaching, several coral reefs all over the world. Um, and the, there are clear signs also in the deep sea that the uh, trolling and bottom contact fisheries are, of course, desertifying some uh, important areas also in the deep sea. So we are facing um, a world in which we have anthropogenic impacts, which are not just acting at local scale, but are producing cumulative effects that are spreading all over. And there are the uh, cumulative, uh, you know, uh, the synergistic impact of the trolling, pollution, contamination, maritime transportation, whatever. And uh, you, you can see the red areas which are spreading, especially associated to the main route, the most developed countries are highlighting the importance of the, the rising impacts on the oceans. And this is a picture that was also showed, shown by, by Rashid, or, or the blue area, which is the, the largest portion of the planet where the, we have almost no laws, except uh, the, the few rules that the International Seabed Authority is defining for the exploitation of minerals, or uh, so the, 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 the basic resources, let's say. The, the evidence that was also showed by the, the talk by Jeffrey is that the ocean future can become very conflictual for the reclamation of the resources there. And uh, this is particularly evident for the offshore areas and the exploitable deep sea regions. We are looking for the exploitation of mesopelagic fish before knowing if the biomass is renewable, before knowing the migrations, grow rate, and whatever. And we have increasing the evidence for a threatened marine uh, you know, habitats for many, many reasons. Uh, Lisa was mentioning uh, our spills or the, um, before the contamination, bottom trolling, marine litter, global climate change, all of these are impacting the oceans from the surface down to the deep sea. Nando Boero this morning was also, was this morning, it's, it's a long day, I don't recall exactly, but it was mentioning about the problem of the natural capital, and we are eroding the natural, the natural capital in different ways, and there is quite uh, um, important evidence that the macroalgal forests, the brown algae, have decreased by more than 80% in the last decades in the Mediterranean region. And we are losing seagrasses, which are so important to buffer uh, also the, the, the pH and the, the acidification along the U.S. coast and all over the world, uh, decreased by at least 25% when compared just to 50 to 60, 70 years ago, and so forth for coralligenous and precious habitats. In addition to that, we have an increasing impact of illegal fisheries that are causing a huge you know, damage to the local fisheries, to the local economy. Uh, and we can also estimate the cost of the damage for the local population. So, of course, if we lose habitats, if we lose natural capital, we are moving towards the collapse of uh, ecosystem services. Uh, we are losing biomass, we are losing habitats, we are losing our production, we are losing a lot of uh, important issues, even the ability of the systems to uh, abate contaminants and whatever. So now we know clearly that we have 
develop strategies. And so in this direction are moving the European biodiversity strategy, the European Green Deal, so they recognize the importance of biodiversity for your own well-being, and they say that we have to do something, but the contribution of marine ecosystems to societal welfare is not properly counted and addressed. Uh, it was mentioned before, the decade of ecosystem restoration. And we all know that if we are here, is that we have a countdown to the 2030. So we, we need to achieve some results in the next eight years. And we are already beyond schedule. But in addition to that, the United Nations also declared another decade. that was a decade of ecosystem restoration. In my opinion, the intention initially was dedicating this de de decade to stop uh, the deserts and to, the, to, you know, to, to for re reforestation uh, and to stop you know, the, the, the collapse of terrestrial ecosystems in terms of forest or whatever. But we are also looking to the possibility of restoring the marine habitats as well. So we have a fantastic decade a decade in which we declare the need of more ocean science for sustainable development, along with the opportunity to use this decade to restore also marine ecosystems. So we, need, we do need not just a European Green Deal. With the one ocean, we need a global deal. And the global deal is preserving and restoring ecosystems and biodiversity, including the blue planet including the news. So we need to move across a strategy in which we need to rethink the policies to change the economic approach of the mainstream towards a real circular, sustainable blue economy, to develop large infrastructures for sustaining a sustainable uh, fishery and aquaculture. In other words, we need to develop strategies to protect and restore natural systems for the sustainable use of resources. And this is fundamental to achieve and improve the, uh, the future that was mentioned in Jeffrey, and to improve human health in the sense of the one health too. And we do need to act now. We do need to act now because uh, the inaction has huge economic costs. Not just because we predict an impact of uh, increasing exploitation, but because even if we don't do so, if we, we stay you know, sustainable somehow, the cost of inaction, given the erosion of the net natural capital, will have cost in the order of several trillions euros a year. So the only way to push to the right part of that graph, so have a, having a positive balance, is that we act to recover marine ecosystems, not just to leave the system as they are. Because if we protect marine habitats, it's fine, and we can recover also fish stocks or whatever in the long term, but we likely need centuries to get that resolved. So we need to support the restoration of marine ecosystems somehow. So the solutions, the solutions are looking at the problems, that is, uh, was mentioned before, the, we have altered and contaminated the oceans. So we, that now 66% of the oceans has been altered somehow. Climate change, contamination, uh, overfishing, whatever. So we have to remove that impact. The second is we need, of course, to achieve the targets of the United Nations for the agenda 2030. So protect. 30% of the oceans and 10% strictly protected. But then we have to move to the core of the problem. What to do with the ecosystems that have been completely destroyed or degraded? We have to move and restore them because we haven't time to wait for them to recover. Uh, so we need some actions. And these actions are to enhance the natural capital that, by definition, is a common good. Because the natural capital is what belongs to all of us, independently from the country we are living in. So natural capital belongs to all. And if we move to increase the natural capital, we serve all the citizens, and we do the good for everyone. 
The, the strategies are rehabilitation and restoration of ecosystems, other than the coastal and the deep sea, looking for the red list of IUCN, looking for the highly vulnerable habitats and species and ecosystems. Then we need to a, a requalification, ecological requalification of the impacted components, and we need to integrate a sustainable aquaculture in because we understood that infinity fish, you know, in this way, the way we are working it is no longer uh, conceivable. Then we have to uh, increase the protection of the Natura 2000 habitat, so the, the most important. Uh, habitats from an ecological point of view, so implementing the marine protected areas, but we also have to monitor biodiversity and to monitor our natural capital. So we need a commission in every country all over the world that provides an assessment and uh, uh, advise the government if the policies they do are consistent with the preservation or implementation of the natural capital of the decisions they're making are further eroding the natural capital that is the common good. So rebuilding pristine marine ecosystems is, is an important target. It's challenging, of course, but can be done. And we need to learn the, uh, the, 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 from the, the great experience accumulated in terrestrial ecosystems. We have to make uh, um, uh, success over the long term Otherwise, we are not you know, believable somehow. And we have to use the best technologies. And this is also an opportunity to create new jobs, of course. So we need a roadmap for a global marine ecosystem restoration. And the first step is assessing the status of marine habitat. How many of them, for, you know, to what extent they have been altered, degraded, you know, they can recover, in the, they are resilient, they can recover in the short term or not. We need protocols for, for restoration in different habitats, in different conditions. We need to assess the degree of the success of the restoration. And we have also to prove that this is good for the social uh, economy of our countries, are good for the local populations, are consistent with the cultural heritage they have. But we also need to define legal policy governance frameworks that other, otherwise you know, we are not supported. We are not pushed in the direction of doing what we need to do. So uh, we have to make to reverse the degradation of the habitats and to do that in the very long term. So first of all, mapping. Mapping is an opportunity to know better the biodiversity. So to something that we need for the maritime spatial planning, we do need, we, maritime spatial planning is not a two-dimensional system. We, don't, we have an, an habitat mapping, how we can do marine, maritime spatial planning without having a habit, habitat map. Where are the climate refuge you, you uh, Lisa, was also referring to? Where, where are, which are the priority areas for restoration? Where we can make a successful restoration? Maybe we can't restore everything, so we start to, we need the priorities, okay? Then we need standardized protocols that optimize the success and are you know, feasible, even with low technologies, but on a large scale. Then we need to measure the success. How we can measure the success? Uh, restoration is not just, it's a process. We start and then we recover, maybe in five, 10 years, maybe more, instead of 200 years. But it's a long term, you know compared to the need of having immediate results that we are looking, all looking for. And then we have to make uh, uh, of marine ecosystem restoration a societal driver. And a societal driver is either because we have societal benefit, but also because we can create a new economy of the ecosystem restoration uh, in the coastal zone management. Uh, ports and harbors, coastal engineers, decommissioning of oil, you know, the oil platforms or whatever. We have a huge array of you know, possibilities to do restoration and to develop a new economy, new professionals that will be important in the, uh, in the next uh, uh, decade or so. And in addition to that, we need a policy governance. We need arrangement. So we need either a top-down and a bottom-up approach. So we need the local community that 
and understand that they want to have back the pristine ecosystems they need for a good quality of life, but we also need politicians understanding that, you know, that new legal frameworks are needed. So, and this is very good, for instance, in Europe, because we have a, a, a European Union that is pushing to the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, to the Water Framework Directive, and these are, you know, have cascades effects on other countries. But Europe is a drop in the ocean of the world. So we need to expand and to have a much broader and global view of these approaches. Um, but understand what controls the legal framework uh, and to develop and design a legitimate governance uh, and, and, and adequate legal regimes, maybe considering also the local issues and the local cultures to be applied in Africa, in Asia, and in, in Latin, America, Latin America and so forth. We are facing one of the most challenging, you know, um, uh, issues of the future, uh, in my opinion. Just think at the European cost. We are just a drop in the ocean, a minuscule part of the planet ocean. Here we have 68,000 kilometers and approximately just a rough estimate, 20% of them have been degraded to a certain extent. Or think about Italy. So the dimension of, of these uh, habitats to be restored is huge. And in front of that important mission, we have just a limited experience that has been accumulated, as you can see here, maybe in, within a, the last decade, maybe in the last 15 years. So we are still testing the feasibility and the endurance of the long term of the ecosystem restoration. But the potential is huge. And from 50 to 90% of the uh, restoration attempts, have been successful and are lasting over the long term. And uh, we are starting understanding that uh, selecting the good areas for ecosystem restoration and identifying where is even more important than how. So we need to find the good places to start a successful restoration. And then the last part of my talk is dealing with the technological bottleneck that makes the difference, but also creates huge you know, gaps in between the advanced world and the developing countries. So, so far we have used technologies to exploit and to consume and to erode the planet faster and faster. Technology has been powerful to change also, to improve you know, the, the human well-being until a certain level, but now we are understanding that these technologies are also impacting tremendously natural ecosystems and marine habitats. And now we need to develop new technologies that are able to reverse the process. So if we are able to develop destroying technologies, I think we are able and capable of conceiving and producing technologies able to repair you know, and to recover marine habitats and biodiversity. So, in other words, we have to promote a, a blue-green revolution driven by uh, the concept of nature, natural capital, and technology. We have to believe and invest in, uh, in the technologies needed for the ecological transition, which are not just technologies to uh, gather more uh, minerals in the deep sea, but to save energy, to recycle raw materials, for the renewable energies, of course, for CO2 sequestration, using maybe nature-based solutions for recycling, for waste treatment, or whatever. But we do need also technologies for eco-technology for seawater desalinization, because we depend very much on the water for agriculture for the future. And desalinization means clean marine waters. Otherwise, we drink polluted waters as well. And then we need technologies for ecological restoration. And these are important technologies to act over the large scales that are needed for restoration. So we need to tackle the root of the problem and um, sustain also the long-term actions. It's not just a matter of findings. It's a matter of culture 
prioritization, upscaling. We need to coordinate policies, and we need uh, collaborations because we can't repair marine ecosystems alone. We need uh, an overall cooperation, innovative funding, cross-sectoral collaborations. So the future challenges are these one. Drivers and degradation should be removed, and we have to start and scale up marine ecosystem restoration and, um, and creating a different culture. We have to see you know, the, the new plants, the future generation, the generazione oceano, the new citizen of the, the future that are able to understand and that pretend to have back pristine ecosystems, marine ecosystems. Thank you very much for your attention.